Before we get started with today's video, I just want to take you through the structure of this particular series. Um, so we've actually partnered with Linode to bring you this series. Uh, this series will involve two parts. So if you head over to linode.com under events, you should find the Hackersploit uh, Linode Live Linux Server Security Series, and you can just click on more info here. So uh, this series is going to be a 12 part series on how to set up, secure and audit Linux servers. Uh, and will begin on um, the 1st of October. Uh, and the first series will be available on YouTube and will include SSH security essentials, configuring sudo access, securing Apache 2, securing Nginx, and uh, the uncomplicated firewall. Uh, the second part of the series will be hosted on Linode Live, and it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, and again, you can access, uh, you can actually register for that there. This is going to be an advanced series that will build up uh, or build off the first series and will cover things like brute force protection, IP tables, uh, uh, WordPress security and security auditing on Linux with uh, the Linux tool. Um, so to access that, just click on the registration link uh, on uh, on the ON24 platform, and that'll take you here. So that'll give you an idea of all the various webcasts and when they're going to be posted. And it'll give you a summary of what will be covered exactly. These are advanced uh, webcasts that will be about 40 minutes, and you can register for them absolutely free of charge. Uh, we've also uh, partnered with Linode to give you guys a free credit. Uh, so again, if you are interested in using Linode uh, for your vir virtual private server or for your hosting, whether you're a developer or a administrator, uh, you can get $100 of 90 day credit. Uh, and th this is for new accounts. Um, so that's fantastic. Definitely do take advantage of this if you're getting started with Linux or you're actually following, uh, you're following along with this series. However, make sure to actually redeem this offer or this code, uh, which is under promo.lindo.com uh, and the code is hackersploit100. Uh, this offer will only be limited till the 15th of December, so definitely check that out. That being said, let's get started with today's video. Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Linux security series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to set up and configure the uncomplicated firewall, also known as UFW. All right, so let me just give you a bit of a background as to what UFW is and how it works and its relation with I, uh, with IP tables. Now, UFW is a utility that is designed to uh, simplify the setup and management of firewall rules in more specific IP tables rules. Now, when I say that, uh, essentially UFW allows you to very easily uh, and very succinctly uh, control, uh, set up your various uh, firewall rules uh, and the main utility or the tool that UFW uses to do this is IP tables, right? So uh, we can actually get started immediately with it. As mentioned, we're going to be following the example uh, we had set up in the beginning. So uh, our job is to secure the development server that's currently running WordPress. And we're now within the stages of setting up a firewall. And again, we're going to be using uh, UFW. So uh, right over here, uh, we have, uh, if we try and access the web server, we can see that uh, we can pretty much access any service on the target um, that's currently running. So in this case, we have the website running on port 80. And of course, I've been able to establish access using SSH. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to ensure that we have uh, UFW installed. Now, by default, UFW comes prepackaged and installed with on Debian based distributions, if I'm not mistaken, uh, more specifically Ubuntu. Now, given that we are using Debian, we can or we can confirm that we have it installed by saying sudo apt install uh, UFW and we hit enter. I'll just put in the password here. And you can see UFW is already the latest version. Uh, of course, you can view the uh, UFW man pages to get a bit more uh, of a context as to what this tool is and what it's used for. So again, UFW is a program for managing a net filter firewall. This program is used for managing a Linux firewall and aims to provide an easy to use interface for the user. So that's really uh, the, um, the crescendo of UFW is that the fact that it gives you a very easy and uh, understandable syntax to work with in regards to setting up uh, you know, your various firewall rules. Uh, that being said, uh, we can actually go ahead and start taking a look at some of the most important commands. Uh, now, the first thing uh, you want uh, you you need to you, you need to take into consideration is uh, the fact that UFW is a service. Now, when we talk about services, uh, you can start services, you can stop services, you can restart them, and you can enable them. Uh, 
to actually be uh, to actually be run on the system startup and to do that we uh, we can use the various init systems that come uh, with linux in our case we're using system control and that's uh, going to be the likely choice for most of you so the first thing you want to do is before you uh, be before you go ahead and start setting up any any of your rule sets is you need to understand that and you want to make sure that you do not enable uh, the uh, you do not enable the UFW service before you've set up your firewall rules because it can actually lock you out. So that's something you want to take into consideration there. Uh, that being said, I'm just going to uh, stop talking and we can actually get started. So uh, we can run the command with, uh, and the, it does require root privileges. So we say sudo uh, UFW and we can take a look at the status, right? So the current status is telling us that it is active. And uh, this is by default, I believe, with the uh, I believe this is the default uh, scenario uh, with this particular Linode. It does come with UFW uh, set up. And uh, of course, you can see uh, we have uh, both IPv4 rules and IPv6 rules. And it's sorted out uh, in the form of the protocol or the port and the action and from or where the, the traffic is coming from. So, uh, for example, we have an SSH port uh, and this, that, of course, is TCP and the action is set to allow. So that means uh, SSH is allowed to connect to the server from any IP in the world and so on and so forth for all the other various ports, uh, port 80, port 443, port 25 for SMTP, port 587, 110, etc. And then of course, the same is repeated for IPv6. Now, uh, you can modify the default uh, UFW configuration file by going into uh, Vim, Etsy, default, and we're looking for UFW and I'll hit enter and uh, you can enable or disable uh, IPv6 if you want that uh, it's recommended to have it uh, running which uh, again we'll leave it as it is you can also set the default input policy to accept drop or reject if you want and again you can do that for the default output policy the forward policy uh, the application policy so on and so forth so the configuration is fairly simple um it's fairly simple to set up. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of the current. Um, we are going to get rid of the current configuration. So, if we if we take a look at the status, you can see uh, it, the, the current status is active. So, if we say uh, sudo um, sudo uh, ufw disable, so we'll disable the service, and you can see it's going to tell us the firewall is stopped and disabled on system startup. If we take a look at the status one more time. It's not going to tell us that it's inactive and that really hasn't affected anything in regards to what we can access because even before the rules were all set to give us access anyway. So it's always recommended when setting up a firewall, especially one on a server, to set up everything from scratch because it's these type of rules that have been pre-configured for you uh, that can be that can really cause an issue because you may forget to to disable one or you may have ones that you don't understand uh, that are currently set up so it's always good to start uh, afresh and to start afresh we need to reset this so we say sudo ufw reset right and that will reset all the uh, the in the all the setup rules and it's going to tell us this may disrupt existing ssh connections uh, and it's going to ask us if we want to proceed with the operation. This is very important. So before you reset the rules, ensure that UFW is disabled so you still have access to the server. So I'm just going to hit yes, and that's going to delete it. And um, you can see it's going to back up the rules into uh, user.rules, and it gives you the directory here. Um, so that's just in case you want to revert back. Um, so again, if we say sudo UFW um, status, you can see it's currently inactive and um, we can then take a look at uh, the web server. You can see it's still working. If we exit from here and we try and reconnect via SSH, we should be able to still have access, right? So I'll just set that up and there we are. We still have access and we had secured it with our SSH key. All right, excellent. So now we can actually get started uh, by setting up the default policies. Uh, and this is recommended for every fresh configuration. So the default policies are as follows. The default policy for incoming connections is that we deny them. And the default policy for outgoing connections is that we allow them. So we'll set that up. And then after that, we'll start configuring our own rules. So we say uh, sudo ufw um, and we say default uh, deny out incoming. So sudo ufw default deny incoming. 
and don't worry if that doesn't make sense we'll we'll be changing all of this and uh, we can then say sudo default uh, allow outgoing right so we say allow outgoing and remember this is still uh What's happening is the UFW is, is currently disabled, so it's not going to affect anything as of yet. So if I try and restart the server, um, you can see we, we should still have uh, we should still have access if it's if it does not work. Uh, and we can see that that's still working. If it doesn't work, uh, what we can do is we can disable the service completely. So we can say sudo system control uh, status UFW is going to tell us that it's loaded and active so we can disable it in the meantime. So we can say uh, stop right and uh, we're gonna have that stop and again that doesn't affect anything yet so it's very important that you uh, you actually disable everything you set your rules and then activate it and see if anything is causing any issues so that's the first step here um, and we've set up the default policies the next thing we can take a look at is if we take a look uh, and we see um, we say sudo ufw status we can display that it's going to tell us it's inactive so we can start adding our rules so uh, when adding your rules, when configuring your various rules for your firewall, it's very important that you understand what rules or what services you want to keep active in regards to uh, incoming and outgoing connections and what and what uh, services and protocols you want to actually disable or prevent from being accessed. In our case, we know that the two essential protocols that we want to keep active are going to be HTTP both on a, a port 80 and port 443 for HTTPS and port 22 for SSH. So to do that, we're going to say sudo uh, ufw allow and we can specify the protocol either by saying SSH or by the port number. In this case, we can simply just say SSH, hit enter. It's going to say rules updated for both IPv4 and IPv6. We can then say uh, UFW status. And again, it's going to tell us it's inactive. And uh, once we enable it or we start it, we will actually list out with the various rules that we have. Uh, the next rule we want to allow is going to be HTTP. So that's both uh, port 80 and HTTPS, even though we haven't configured an SL, SSL certificate yet. So uh, these are the most important rules. And of course, we can allow any other ports that we want. So for example, if I wanted to allow FTP, I can say FTP like so. And we don't have FTP running on the, on the server, but again, we can do that as well. Um, if we want to allow a particular connection from an IP address, like uh, let's say we only want to allow um, or we, we want to allow a connection from a particular IP address explicitly, we can define that. So we can say sudo uh, ufw uh, allow, sorry, let me just correct the syntax here. So sudo ufw allow, and then we say from, and we list out the IP address right over here. So I can say 10.0.0.1, for example, I can do that right over here and hit enter. It's going to say rules updated. I can also specify to, uh, uh, I can also explicitly define uh, a rule that allows a particular connection to a particular port. So let's say I deny uh, all SSH connections, but I only allow an SSH connection from a particular IP to the SSH port. So to, to do that, I would simply say uh, sudo uh, ufw allow from the IP to any port 22. So sudo ufw allow from 10.0.0.1 .0 um, to any port 22, right? And hit enter and uh, that rule is updated. And I can also do this for any other port or any other IP. I can also specify an entire subnet. And uh, it's very important when specifying IP addresses uh, to ensure that the IP addresses that you'll be using or that you're setting within your rules, uh, these IPs have to be static and not dynamic. Because if you set up uh, your firewall to allow connections from your IP address and your IP address changes, then you'll not get access because the rule has been set for that IP alone. So you can also set subnets if you want. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just simply showing you how to do this. So that's essentially uh, all your rules uh, to, uh, th that will allow these particular services that we've stated explicitly. Now, after we've done this, we don't want to deny anything yet because uh, by default, uh, all incoming connections have been set to deny. Uh, that was the default policy configuration that we set up earlier. So what we can do is we can say sudo um, system control uh, start and we say UFW. And we can then say uh, sudo ufw uh, enable, ufw enable, like so. 
and it's going to say this this may disrupt existing ssh connections i'm going to hit yes and the firewall is active and enabled if we now say uh, sudo ufw status and we hit enter it'll now going to list our the various rules that we have configured so you can see that uh, for port 22 that is set to allow port 80 is set to allow port 443 allow port 21 allow and then we are allowing any connection from this ip right over here which is kind of a useless rule i was just adding it there so you can understand what's going on and then of course we can we allow all connections to port 22 from this particular ip so if we try and access our web server now we should have access to it immediately like so and uh, again the reason I'm, do I'm doing this is just to show you that it is working so if i try and connect via ssh here uh, you can see that works as well so those are that is how to allow or how to set rules to allow connections if we want to um, if we want to start denying connections to services we can say for example uh, let me just say sudo uh, ufw and if we want to list out the rules and delete certain rules we can say ufw status uh, numbered we can list out the various um, the numbering for all of these rules and then we can say sudo ufw delete uh, and then specify a uh, a, a a rule number so in our case, what we can do now is we can start getting rid of rule five and rule six. So sudo ufw and we say delete, um, sorry, uh, delete rule five, right? So delete rule five because we don't need that. And um, it looks like we have an issue. sudo ufw delete um, and we just specify the option five here and it's going to say deleting. Yes, we want to do that. And we then take a look at the status again. We then want to disable rule five again because it's moved upwards uh, one more time. So we hit enter. That's going to delete that. And now if we take a look at the status again, you can see the only, uh, the only rules that we have are going to be port 22. So that is allowing SSH connections. We then have port 80, which allows uh, HTTP connections, port 443, port 21, which is FTP. So we can also get rid of port 21 because uh, we do not have um, we do not have FTP running. So we can delete that. And now it's becoming more, much more clearer. So uh, just for an example, if I want to deny all connections to the web server, I can do that very simply uh, by first of all listing out, and I can say uh, I wanted to. to I want to delete uh, the rule 22 or sorry the rule 2 not 22 so i can delete that and that's port 80 for, HT, uh, for http and if i try and reload the web server now uh, we'll just wait for that to reload here and you can see i have no connection coming back so that means i've uh, i've uh, I, again within the firewall i've configured um, no access or no incoming access for the port 80 and uh, you might be wondering well we haven't actually configured that manually the reason that is uh, is the case is because when we were configuring the default policy lists by default if you remember uh what happened is we configured all incoming connections uh, or we configured uh, the firewall to deny all incoming uh, connections unless we explicitly uh, define otherwise or we we explicitly allow it manually in our case, we allowed only port 22, port 80, port 443 manually. So uh, those are the only ones that are going to be working. So again, if I list out the status one more time, if I now enable it, so I say sudo ufw enable HTTP and hit enter. Uh, sorry, sudo not enable. We want to allow it. My bad. Uh, the syntax is uh, much more simpler. So allow and it's going to add the rule. And if we now try and refresh uh, the web server, you can see it now works. Now we can also allow, as I said, from a particular IP. So if I won't only want to allow my IP address uh, access to that particular to, that, to, to the web server, what I can do is I can get my uh, my public IP address. So what's my IP? And um, I can just you know copy that. And of course, uh, I can then just go back into my terminal here. And if I say, if I list out the rules, because I want to delete the rule that allows all connections. So, uh, for example, if I go into the status here and uh, I want to delete this rule number three, because that's allowing any connection to the port 80. So we want to get rid of that and then explicitly define that only my IP has access to that port. So I'll say sudo uh, ufw delete port 80, right? So we can get rid of that. 
uh sorry not port 80 option number three and we're gonna hit yes and then we want to say we can then say sudo um uh, ufw allow from ip so sudo ufw allow from ip and we can then paste the ip in here right so allow from to any port any port 80 right and we hit enter and that's going to add it so you can see now it's going to work if i refresh this i'll still have access and that's because i'm trying to access it with my id uh, with my ip address if i delete that rule so i'll just list the status numbered and i delete this rule right over here you can see it allows only my ip so i'll just say sudo um ufw delete and that is rule three and i hit enter there we are and i try and refresh this you should now see that we have no access to the web server and I can then uh, re-enable the rule that allows any IP address to access it. So this is a great way for IP or, or uh, administrators of the on, on the web server to actually disable access to the particular website uh, and only they can access it because they have their own IP. And as I said, a, a note of caution is ensure that you have uh, a static IP. Otherwise, if your IP address changes or you go to a different location, with a different IP address, you'll not be able to access it. So you want to keep that in mind. I generally don't recommend running these rules. Um, so I'll, I'll, again, we just say sudo ufw allow uh, HTTP hit enter, and that's just going to allow anyone to access it. So if we list these the numbered uh, rules, that's pretty much fine for me right now. So if I refresh that, we still have access. So again, you can see how easy it is and how uh, important it is to uh, to, to configure your rules yourself and to understand what's going on. Now, as I said, on this particular web server, the only services we need running are going to be SSH and and uh, and the web server. And we've we've talked about securing SSH. We've talked about securing the web server. We can also limit uh, SSH access to our IP. And to do that, all I would need to do is just delete the um, the SSH rule here, and then specify, uh, the, uh, I can just say sudo ufw allow from my IP address to the port 22, and that will only allow my IP address to connect via SSH. So that's fairly simple. And of course, I can deny any particular service. So I can say here, sudo ufw deny instead of allow. Uh, so sudo ufw uh, deny FTP. So I can deny all FTP connections, all FTP incoming connections if I want. I can also say another service like uh, HTTP. If I say sudo ufw deny HTTP and I hit enter, I can do that as well. So allowing and denying is very, very simple. If I want to deny from a particular IP, I can also do that sudo uh, ufw deny from and I specify the IP. So uh, deny from, I can put in my IP right over here and I can then say to any particular service or just deny all connections from this particular target so i can do that right here so you sudo ufw deny from and then paste in my ip and uh, if i try and access the web server i should uh, let me just restart that uh, there we are it looks like we cannot connect um, if i go back and i try and exit out of ssh here and i try and re-establish ssh an ssh connection you can see I don't have access. So I have fundamentally uh, or essentially just locked myself with I actually got access back. And that's because uh, if I say sudo uh, UFW uh, status numbered. Um, there we are. I'll just paste in my password. Um, you can see that it's going to allow any SSH um, connection. And if we delete that, uh, you can see uh, I can once I delete that particular rule, it's going to deny all connections and I can then explicitly state a port that I want. So that's essentially how to deny connections. If we want to delete rules, as I said, we can say sudo ufw delete. Um, we can get rid of, um, let's see, uh, rule number five because we don't need that. Hit yes. Uh, do we need uh, rule four? We can actually just get rid of rule four because I don't think we need that. That is deny port 21 FTP, yes. And then we can get rid of rule um, rule three. So uh, we just get rid of rule three and uh, we can then just say sudo ufw allow HTTP and hit enter and that's going to allow our web server. So we now have access to the web server. There we are. And we also have access via SSH. So the key thing to take into consideration here, allowing and denying rules is very simple. 
just know what services and ports you want to keep uh, active uh, the ones you want to allow connections to and uh, the ones you want to uh, you actually want to protect uh, from active connections you can specify the ip addresses you want to block uh, you can specify the IP addresses you want to allow in, but with that, you want to make sure that um, uh, you want to make sure that you're not uh, specifying a dynamic IP address that can then later lock you out. If you're working with Linode or any other cloud provider, you also have the ability to to get yourself out of trouble using the console here. The console gives you a um, a terminal within your browser, so you can re-establish access that way. And it does not use SSH by default, so you can actually just get access. So if I say root and here enter my password, which we had actually disabled root through SSH, but you can see I now have access uh, to the root account. So that's a great way to you know save yourself or rescue yourself if you're ever in a situation where you've mucked up a firewall and you've locked yourself out. Uh, so it's always good to have that handy. Um, so deleting setting rules, very, very simple. If you want to reset your, uh, if you want to reset UFW, you can do that as well. So I can say sudo, if I, let me just list uh, the status. So sudo UFW status, uh, it's going to tell us it's active. We can say sudo UFW uh, reset. That's going to get rid of all your rules. So if you make, if you, if you make a mistake, you can reset all of those mistakes by just hitting enter. I'm going to hit yes and it's going to back up all of your rules if we take a look at the status you can see it's still it's going to tell us it's inactive when you hit re, if you hit reset it's going to turn it off and again there we are um if we refresh this we'll still have access to the site because the firewall is now enabled uh, sorry it's now disabled so uh a few things i want to make clear uh ensure that you set up your default policies first then explicitly define the policies you want to allow in in terms of the connections. You can also uh, you can also define the ones you want to deny. Then enable the firewall, and then you can test it out that way. So UFW is very very simple to understand. It's very intuitive, uh, and it all uh, revolves around what you want to do or how you want to configure your server. So uh, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. I just want to take a moment to thank all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash hackersploit for all the support. Your support and help is truly appreciated. You keep us making uh, newer and fresher and better content. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons. Um, so thank you, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, Michael Hubbard, and Jerry Speds.